And were they here before that? Yes, they would always be up and down and in and out of these alcoves. We have evidence of the first people from 500 AD living down here. So you would always be accessing, this is a perfect place to live in a desert area. But there may be other reasons you would move up to the top. For farming, just to, to be near your crops. You know, maybe fire did ravage some of these areas. We have evidence of that. Fires do come in here. And some of the rooms have burned out for various reasons. We all move around. We all find new homes within our cities. And we find a way to uh, find our communities. So these people are doing the same. So come on, keep going here.
some of them back. But that's part of that Park Service legacy. In 1916, when we no longer allow people to take anything out of this area. So that is the, and in 1906, we have the Antiquity Act. In 1906, that's when we definitely say nobody can take anything out of here. You can't come and excavate. Go ahead, you guys. and painted on with all sorts of colors that you would see here. Now I have to ask you, I have to ask you as we continue on, um, who are these people? Where do these people go? Are their descendants still here? 800 years of habitation? Do we know who these people are? Some leftover frames for these for your screening. Very much so. And their descendants are alive. And they did leave this area in the 1200s. And I bet it's because of all of the same reasons we talked about. All of those reasons. The drought. Probably the trade. And probably re um, the de deforestation of the land. All these reasons of why they might leave and walk away from this area. And they certainly do. And right now we know that there's 21 groups of people attached to these people here. And they left and they walked into northern New Mexico. So if you've ever heard of Taos and Santa Fe and Albuquerque, 19 groups of these people live there today. They took with them the Kiva. They took their pottery. They took their culture and their life. So you can go today to Taos Pueblo and you can see a World Heritage Site that actually the construction of that began in the 11 and 1200s. So these people move out of here, they find their way on the Rio Grande where there's running rivers, big running rivers, plenty of farmland, and they recreate their lives over there. And so that would be the House Pueblo area and the Santa Fe area. And today you can go and meet these people. You could keep going here. We can go, you can go and meet these people in that area. They're very welcoming. We can take a feast in the South Pueblo area. So they are the true descendants of the people from Mesa Verde. So they call themselves, like they call themselves by a tribal name that is their own name. We might know them as the Zuni, or the Akamak, or the Hopi, or the Haymes. And so there's 21 groups of people. And those are the modern day names of these people, actually. So um, we place those names, and they place those names on them, probably close to the 14, 1500s. So um, they are the two descendants, and they would have, they would 
want you to know that they were here yesterday. They're here today, and they're here, but they will be here tomorrow. They're very intelligent people and a very open minded people. So, thank you for coming on the tour. And uh, if you have any questions, I'll be here. If you'd like to exit, you can find yourself going up the staircase. If you look to the right as you're climbing the staircases and the ladders, you will see the fancy bubble. So I'll be right here. We have a few more minutes to the site before we exit. This is inside the tower. Oops. I get my thumb over the way. This is inside the tower. I thought there was some painting. There it is right up there. And we're pretty sure that's original painting right there as well. So whoever was on the third story was the artist. You can see it back up there too. Oh. This is the one that's got the painting on it mm -hmm. on, the third, on the third story. or the Janae is what they call themselves. So they come later. Now the youth here were in this area. They were already here, I believe, during and before. Yeah. I know it's one of those people. I'd probably have to say that. Yes. Um, oh, and that's us. Oh, we did that. No, no, no. Has everybody got to see this um, area here? Did you guys get to see it? Yeah. So keep making your way over here, everybody. We'll get on this side of the kiva. How tall were they? These people were approximately five foot to five three, and so um, their average age is like. Or mineral deposits, iron, and that's orange paint. Is that you know, what did you look? It went all the way around. But all the plants, so plants have um, their dyes in them. Yeah. The flowers and have the their flowers. dyes in it. And yes, and then also the rock. You can scrape the rock. So we have these things called conditions <coughs> that where ore has encapsulated this uh, organic matter in the sandstone. And then you can use that you for your painting. You can use that. Yeah. Okay. They had black on white pottery, so you know the clay that they're finding is gray. And it's called Manka shell clay. And you see it as you drive out by Park Point. It's just this big gray 
And so though every part of the ecosystem and the layers... And they used it all. I mean, they, they understand it, it all. all. Yeah, they made it all yeah. connected. You yeah. did a great job questioning, and I loved it. Oh, I felt, like, yeah. I felt like I had some things I missed. So. No, you well, we were, great. When you were talking <laughs> about you. the rainwater in the springs, mm -hmm. we were in, in uh, Moab a couple of days ago, and there was a guy crawling out of... And he came out with water. He came tests. out of cave and oh, he came with, out with, with all the wet chunks. caves. So he must have been. He, he must have been a local that guy that, that yeah. there was a that spring filter, in there. That filter, that spring was right yeah. in there. And, <coughs> and, <coughs> and, <coughs> and, and sometimes yeah. those springs are just healthy and full. Yeah. And yeah. We have springs yeah. where we live in yeah. Michigan and we go to those springs. Anyway. Yeah, we get a lot. So you know, the, and they're those yeah. are probably. But ours come from the ground. Yeah, same in Montana. But guys don't come from that. So we have that was really cool. Yeah, and they they percolate out of the ground this way. So that's really cool. Cool. Well, thank, thank you for you your knowledge. Are all of the dwellings completely devoid of glyphs? Um, no, there's petroglyphs in almost all of them. Are there? Yes, and the hard part about it is that the Cliff Palace, I can't really show you any in here. They're hidden, they're back in yeah. the out-of-the-way areas? Yeah, they're in the out-of-the-way areas. And I figured there had to be some in here, but... Yeah, and so in, um, in the black areas, and see, you can't see them, there might be... In the black areas over mm -hmm. there, you might see cross hatches. I see one over yeah, there. Yeah, now that you say that, I do too. And um, we call those the Navajo star, or the star. So they, don't, they call it that, but it's just a star. And these people weren't Navajo. So that, you know what I mean? Yeah, they have to call them something, though. We named used... everything in the 1700s. We named European. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, happens all over. Yeah, and that's okay until they come up with whatever the real name well, really is. Yeah, are. and then you go, oh, okay. Yep, we'll do that, that works. I used to love going through southeastern Utah hunting petroglyphs. And that's all my the, favorite thing is inscriptions. Yeah. And they're all over the Rocky Mountain Range from the top to the bottom. And now there's a book that you can get called Plains Indian Rock Art. Mm. And it's chronological, it's chronological by icon and by area. Really? Say the name so again. It's called Plains, um, Plains, Indian. Plains Indian Rock Art. Do you know who the author is? Clawson. Clawson, okay. And it's, it's amazing because it shows rock art. It shows what we've learned about it, the time periods. Mm -hmm. We've been able to put time periods on it and define the motifs. And then you see how it spreads up. They've done it, uh, mapped it out to... I'll have to look for that. I've been yeah. trying to find a good book on that. All the ones I find are... I'm not. It's mostly Montana, oh, but okay. the truth is, is it does the whole Rocky Mountain range that gets into Mesa Verde too. Hmm. So I mean, even if they were plains or lived up there, um, they're still sharing all that too. The inscriptions. Came up from New Mexico. You do? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so we've been visiting some of the pueblos and coming up. We actually. Um, are you li so? Are you living in Albuquerque now? Yeah, then? we live in Albuquerque now. Yeah.
Mm-hmm. So there were some tribes of you. Um, so no, um, they had trade with people. Yeah, coming down. Yeah, so people, so the Montanans are uh, people up there are nomadic and semi-nomadic. Ah. And so they were different. They didn't yeah. have the architecture, and they certainly didn't farm until way later. Yeah. Like that. That was a yeah. <laughs> and they were plains people, so they lived off the bison. And the, they were meat eaters, bison hunters. And that's when we had 64 million bison in America. Yeah, and so that was a major food for the plains and, uh, and so those people, they basically probably came down from the north and crossed over the land bridge and um, they would have been the first hunter-gatherers. So in Montana we have a burial site that's dated at 12,500 years and it's a two-year-old child that was buried with an atlatl and a spear and several tools. Ah, uh, there's some monkeys. I took a picture in case mom missed it. I don't know if we'll be able to see it here, but these are called monkey steps. These are steps that they were carved in. This is what they used to use to get in and out of here with. They're worn out very much by now. But there's whole sets of steps that are just kind of carved into the rock. It's what they used to use. These aren't the greatest example, but they work. Up and over and then up this way. I was glad to finally see some monkey steps. I couldn't remember if there were any in here or not. Any of the um, hand and toe holes? Yep. So they're right, a bunch of them. Yep, I saw those. There's a place in Lake Powell you can go way up on the cliff and just scare yourself silly with them. Those are some that if you walk up a little hole, you can, you can take a photo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so these are original toe and hand Here we go, that was the cliff palace. 